Sounds like I gotta help her, but it's actually the client. He really wants his chest key done. Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be working on a Kim only 22 RXPX. All right, guys, so this is a 22, and it's a, it has 103 arrows on it. This is crazy. So let's snoop around and see what we can find. Man, let me tell you, this guy really knows how to take care of his jet ski. I mean, I I can't really pick on it. I mean, this is he's done a really, really good job. Now, he says he uses Yamaloop, which I tell people, you know, Yamaloop is pretty good. He washes the, the jet ski, waits until it dries, and then uses Yamaloop. Let me tell you, it's pretty good. You're doing a good job. <laughs> Put him on the spot. All right, guys, so you guys been asking for a video how to change a callus cam and springs and retainers on a jet ski. That's what we're going to do today see what happened all right so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the coils out we're gonna take the valve cover off we're gonna start replacing all the springs that's what we're gonna do first all right so take the valve cover off take your little sleeves off and now we're gonna take the rocker bolts off now for you to take the rocker bolts off it needs to be in timing right there as long it don't have to be perfectly on timing just enough that you see the two lines if the two lines are a little bit more up or a little bit down as long as you can see these two lines you're good to take off the rockers because what happens is if this is not on timing and and it's off timing then when you take off the rocker you might break a rocker because there's going to be some valves of the, of the cam it's going to be in some positions that it's going to be pushing up on the rockers so not a good idea gotta be on timing or close to it so now we're going to take the rockers off and then we're going to start doing our springs and retainers got the rockers off i disconnected my injectors from now because you know you don't want the once we're done with this we have to rotate the motor everything is good you don't want the injector to be shooting fuel in there so might as well you know disconnect the coils disconnect your injectors so that's done so now what we're going to do is we are going to start changing the springs and retainers uh, how to find me a table good enough so this is all you need to do the springs and retainers we got the kit the bolts the socket for this guy the air and the little sponges i will explain what that means a little later from my own experience and clients who have dropped the little keepers and they go all the way to the bottom of the jet ski and you don't want that so what i do is i put these little sponges there's a hole here there's two holes right here and two holes right here and there's one under the cam on the front so it's the oil return so the oil returns into the block so i put little sponges in there they, let me show you what they look like this is what i came up with these little sponges and i put them in there just enough you know you don't want to lose them you don't want to lose them and you don't want to forget them because then hmm, now you're in trouble but now you're 100 percent sure that if you drop one of those little things it's not going to go to the bottom of the engine now my little tricks so it will make things a lot easier for you guys let's keep going and let's see what happens we got it ready to go. Basically, now what I need is the air. The air is going to push the, the piston down and it's going to push the valves up. So when I take off the springs and the, and the keepers, the valve 
just don't just drop so you don't want the valve to drop and you want a good air compressor Luke because let me tell you if the air compressor you don't have any air the valve can drop and you just complicated your job so you got to make sure you have a good compressor and it's always on with pressure so let's get this body started baby all right so now we're gonna put air you want to do it a little slower there he goes now another thing too is i do the space and retainers first because you don't want you know let's just say that i took the cam out and then you have the the timing chain timing chain chain a chain <laughs> um loose and then when you rotate the motor it gets caught on the bottom you don't want none of that so i that's the first thing i do is do the spin and retainer since you're rotating the motor and then after i'm done with all this then i put it back on timing and then i'll take the cam off so that's the order um you gotta remember you have to have the air now another thing is how your motor is when you put air in here if your valves are leaking you can hear it you can hear on the intake size you can hear the the, the valves through the supercharger or if it's on the exhaust you will hear it through the exhaust right here at the right here so this jet ski like i say this guy here takes air really 103 hours of this so far this this piston is zero leak down zero so that's pretty good all right so we're ready we got the air on now we can just um do this guy all you do is press it down you don't want to go too far just enough right there and now we use a little magnet that i don't have i gotta go find it hmm. all right so now i got my magnet i go in there I just go like that make sure that i have both of them you see how i got both of them you have to make sure you have both of them on uh, now you repeat the process and the other way. take this out we take this guy off now we can take the spring you got one spring and you have the little spring and as you can see the valve stays there you can even push it down see because it has air got all my springs here here you go put it in there and now we repeat the process we got our two keepers right there we got the new spring install it that's what it is now another little tip that i learned from the races from from racing with ddr and going to the world finals and all these places i met crazy casa casa racing this guy man they've been doing this for a while and i loaned him my spring compressor and what he did was he grinded here and grinded here and you know what that made it he made a square you see how it's square and it's because the sidu head is really tight on this side on this side in certain uh, springs this made a world of a difference so if you have the same spring compressor you might want to do that because if they're tight in two two places and what happens is it will push it kind of that way and it just makes it a lot harder so I learned that from Casa. <laughs> Got it in there and let's keep going. Now another thing is you guys saw me using this guy. Well, I'm not a fan of this. I use it because I do this so many times. It doesn't matter. I know when I'm doing something wrong or when I'm not. But for you guys, I recommend one of these guys because you're gonna do it a lot slower. And you just go in like that. You have to make sure that it's in the middle. 
If it's not on the metal, what's going to happen is the, the retainer is going to be, it's going to push down the valve. And there goes my compressor. So if you hear air leaking out, that means the valve is not on the center of the retainer. And you got it. You, what you gotta do is move this around. You gotta loosen it up a little bit and move it maybe a little bit more this way, a little bit more that way. So you right in the center and you go down. Now, don't go down till you kill it. You know, don't don't go down till you can't go no more. So basically you go down, you see how you can see it right there? You go down a little bit more than that. Just enough. That is pretty good right there. As soon as I see the, the triple groove, as soon as I see the groove on the bottom and it's a little bit up, that's it. Because I know my keepers are gonna fit in there. Now, this is another little trick to put the keepers. Because putting the keepers, let me tell you, it's not an easy thing. I might, when you guys see the way I do it, I'm gonna make it look like it's really easy, but let me tell you, you guys are gonna find out it's not that easy. Not impossible. So I'm gonna teach you a little trick that I, it works for me. Some people do it with a magnet. Some people, or they magnetize one of these guys, or the way I like to do it is with grease. So you take, you take a little bit of grease. It doesn't matter, it can be any type of grease. You put it, here where where the triple grooves are you put a tiny bit like that and then you take don't have to be much i mean you don't have you don't have to kill it a little bit more right there and then you basically just stick it in there you see how that is so now when we come over here i just go like that and i press it I press it in and then I turn it around. You see how I just turn it around? Now I'm ready for the next one. Because once you learn how to do it, I mean, it works for me. I always like to do it on the same side because you're repeating the same process and then you get good. Because if you do one on this one, one that way, then you keep relearning how to do it. So what I do, I put it in spin it around and I repeat the same process for this one I take a little bit take a little bit of grease put it in there don't have to be much just a tiny bit we do the same thing again and now you got to remember there's a they're they're shaped like a cone so they shape like this the smaller side goes to the bottom and the big side goes to the top of course so now we do the same thing we come over here and we put this one oh this one is being uh come on there it goes so now what i do is i press it and make sure that it's there and now when you going up now you have to wash it make sure that it's going it's not sticking up it's not you have to wash it and then And now, what we do is, we take this out. I'll clean off the excess grease and I, I look at them. I look at this one and I look at that one. And make sure that they're pretty close, like, you, you know, they're not crooked, they're not, they, they look right. If it looks just like that one, then you're fine. And that one looks perfect. So now, you repeat the process all the way to the end. Let's see what happens. Springs and retainers are done. Now, you remember, we have to take our little foams out since we're done now with the springs and retainers. 
So we got two, three, four, and five right here. See, make sure you count them. We got them, put them back in our toolbox. Now, we can continue. Springs and retainers are done. Now we're gonna put it back to timing. See, it's not on timing right now. We're gonna put it back to timing and then we're gonna take everything out. We're gonna take the cam out. We're gonna put the new cam in. Um, I do wanna lock the crank. So I'm gonna take the intake off, the intake manifold off so I can, so I can uh, do the crank right here and the tensioner right here. So we got the intake out, basically left the fuel line on and, and this wire, took off the wires, leave the wires here, and just making it so it will be easier for you guys to do it. So you don't get too complicated unplugging stuff and then you don't know where most of the stuff goes. We leave all this stuff here, took off the, the breeder. Breeder. Bre breeder. No, breeder, no, breeder. Listen to this guy Bre teaching me, teaching me English. Breeder. <laughs> this guy here. And now, this washer right there is very complicated. If you drop it, you're in trouble. So you don't want to drop that. So what I usually do is I put my pinky in there and I make sure that it's in there. And then. Wow, this one is in there. All right, plan B, because this one don't want to come out. This is a 22, 21 and up are tough. We got to use a magnet and I got to pop it off, but with the magnet here, I'll show you guys. All right, so you basically put the magnet there. You take just a regular Uh, see what I mean? So now you take it out. This is very, very, very important. If this thing drops, oh boy, you have to take the motor out and take the PTO cover off. You just complicate yourself. But this is one of those things very important. So now we lock the cam. It should be right there. We can use a supercharger since it doesn't have any spark plugs. If it has spark plugs, I wouldn't use a supercharger to turn your motor. So we want to turn it a little bit, just enough, so this thing goes in. Wait, it's not that way, it must be the other way. Right there, a little bit more. There it goes, perfect. Okay. that's what you want to hear now we're gonna take this guy off and lock this guy we got the crank locked right there we got the cam locked we'll take the cam tool out now we're gonna we're gonna try to spin the motor nothing lock right there and now you remember I'm doing it through the supercharger so you don't want to do it too hard see I don't even put like any force on it because I'm gonna show you guys like any force, like maybe like barely nothing because I know the motor spins. So it's completely locked right now. If I take this one out a little bit, now you're gonna see, see how it moves? So we go the other way. So you know the locking tool is right in the money. So that's how you know your crank is good and everything else is good. And when you put your timing, your timing is right on the money. So let's put let's put the one on the on the on the cam back on we will put that one in and they both be locked and we are ready to take off the cam all right so this is perfect we got this one in 
we got this one all the way in as you guys can see because sometimes you think it's inside but it's not that's why you need to play with the supercharger a tiny bit now this is very important don't sit there and make force because you have to get used to how much force you 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 put into the not on the supercharger before the motor start moving so you don't put too much force and then you got issues now with the supercharger you don't want to do that we know without the spark plugs and without the rockers the motor moves very easily that's what I want you guys to know now this sensor needs to come out because for this for the gear to come off so we got to take this sensor off and then we're gonna take the bolts off of the of this guy oh I did forgot something they forgot something so I made a little foam this little guy here that goes in here to prevent for the bolts to come out so we put it in there just enough in case one of the bolts come out see if they do come out those bolts right there then they just stay here just a little trick to make you guys changing the cam a little easier once you take your plug off the tensioner and you just grab a little magnet and you put it in there there it is this is your timing tensioner now this guy you have to drain it you see how hard it is i can even push it in it's hard so right in there there's a little ball that you push now it's very important that you use something that is pointy but not too pointy if it's too pointy and you go in the inside of this you will turn it around it's not actually a little ball it's like a it's like a little thing like this and if you go too far in it will twist and the tensioner is no good no more so what i like to use is just a phillips screwdriver and you stick it in there and you push you see how it just comes off and now you see how easy it is Now we're done to reinstall this. So now what we do is we take off, we go like this, take off this guy here, put it to the side, and now we hold it like this, take off the chain, sometimes wants to stay in there there we go you put it behind just like that and it's easy to just take it off just like so now if your plastic piece on your timing gear is not black like that you should take a little marker and just mark it a little bit it really helps to put it on timing some just keys is not and now either either you can leave the chain here like this or you can drop it i mean either way it doesn't matter it's not going nowhere but if you feel more comfortable leaving like that then leave it like that and now we can just take the cam off and now comes the callus cam baby all right guys here it is callus cam baby all right so we're installing the cam i like to use the lucas um engine lube so we just put a little bit don't have 
to be much. I mean, this is not a brand new motor. If it was a brand new motor and it was dry, then I would put more. But it's just to help it. And that is good enough. I mean, Lucas makes really good products and I love using their products. So something else that, that helps, you know, just to make the job easier, you put it, you see how it has a slot right here so you can put it on timing. I just keep going just like that. And now we put this guy in and there it is nice and locked now we can put the other piece this guy back on it only goes one way this is the way it doesn't go like it won't fit if you try to put it the wrong way let me show you see it's too high it just won't fit it always goes this way and then this guy is the guide for the rockers. So the rockers lock lock up in this little piece right here. So there we go. It's almost flush. It's just a tiny bit on top of it. We're done with that. Now, now we're gonna put the cam gear on. We'll put the timing chain on, on the back like right there where the cam is that's the easiest way of doing this you grab it with the timing up like that the two timing marks you put it in here put it all the way down and now you put it to the side like that and there it is now obviously it's not on timing so then you just go like this and I think one more one more that is pretty good right there that's on timing right there now you're gonna have slack like that and that's okay so next what we're gonna do we're gonna put the bolts i use a, re a little brake cleaner um take all the oil out i personally like to use red loctite i use red loctite on cam gear bolts and flywheel bolts that's it everything else gets blue just this one and i'll show you guys what i use blue on so we want to put a little bit, oh, again, here we go. Putting my phone back on. That's important. Just like so. We use a tiny bit of Loctite. Not too much, you don't have to kill it. And I like to start it with by hand. Not you want to keep it a little loose. I know it's in there. Keep it a little loose and you repeat the process. Black tie. Now you see how I locked it? I back off a little bit. But you want to keep it still loose, just like that. This is the last one. Okay, now we are going to put our timing tensioner. Since this is loose, we put this guy in. Again, we put a little bit of Lucas on it. Just a tiny bit. You don't have to use too much. 
again the motor has oil everywhere put it in there this guy this is the plug for the timing tension it has aluminum crush washer which is supposed to not leak what I like to do is put a little bit of silicone tiny bit not too much you know you know you guys know I don't like to put overdo silicone stuff because it go end up in your motor so just a tiny bit I'm gonna clean it with brake cleaner I'm gonna put a tiny bit in this border I'm gonna put it in there hopefully this key won't leak because sometimes they do leak so let's go ahead and do that like I say, you gotta use a silicone that is oil resistant and just, I mean, barely a little bit. And that's it. This is what we want. Again, always by hand first. You don't have to kill it, just, just enough, you know, just, I mean, this is a little wrench. That's why I, I use this on purpose. A little wrench and you can't really, you know, oversize stuff. So this is good stuff. I tightened that up. Look at this. See, can't move it no more. So, and you look again and it's right on timing. If you look at this, That's what you want to see. This line barely right here, and this one up a little bit. You're on timing. So now, now we're gonna tighten these bolts. Again, same thing. You don't have to kill them. I mean, if you want, you can find the torque on the on the book and you can do it with the torque I do it just like this and it's fine I'm never broken a bolt they're really tough but again I'm using a small wrench and it's really hard to that's pretty good right there check this one yep And that's perfect. And now we're going to put this guy back on. Doesn't matter which way, it's the same thing. We grab it like that, make sure you have it in your finger. You go in an angle, you go in. And now you press, make sure that it's in there. There we go. Perfect. Now you pull back on it. Now remember, this is on 21 and up. 2020 and down, they're just gonna be loose. So expect that. So we're done with this. We can take this guy off. Now, don't forget this guy. Gotta go back in. Again, there's so much oil, I don't have to put any, any lubricant in it. And now we pretty much done with this process. Now we're gonna put the rockers in. All right, so we put in the ARP assembly lube on the bolts. Not too much, just a little bit here and a little bit, tiny bit here. And that's it. So you can put them, torque them back on. This is always a lot of fun. Now these guys go uh, 14 foot pounds and then a 90 degree. That's how you torque this. So let's go ahead and do that and move on. 
All right, so just like we did with the timing tensioner plug, we're gonna do it with the crank plug. Um, just a tiny bit of silicone. I mean, that's what I like to do because it also has a aluminum cross washer. I just like to put a little bit of silicone and just, just, just me. And again, the same thing. We go first by hand. And then we use our little wrench. All right, so we're torquing this guys to 14 foot pounds of torque. And you always start in the middle and you work your, your way out. That's how the sweet, the sequence of the torque goes. I always like to check them twice just to make sure that they're good. All right, so now we do a 90. All right, so basically a 90 is very easy. You put it straight like this and you're gonna put it like this. So you start there and you go all the way right there. That's a 90. And then you go to the next one and you do the same thing. Right there. And then you do this one, this one, this one, this one, and like that. From the inside out. And that's it, we're done. All right, so we're finished. We put the inter back on. We put the spark plugs, the coils. Everything is back on. Now we are changing to a 1318 so he can get a little more acceleration. Maybe one more mile at top, but mostly it's for acceleration the whole shot. So that's why we do the 1318. We're working on that right now. We're gonna go to the lake and see what this baby can do. All right, sounds good. Now it needs to be tuned. And who, look who's there, Mr. Jack. Ready to go.